fire that ripped through a Royal Navy aircraft carrier left 10 sailors needing medical attention and destroyed at least 100 beds. The fire broke out on board HMS Queen Elizabeth, the Navy's flagship carrier, which was alongside in Glenmallon in Scotland, where it was offloading ammunition before it sails on to Ross Scythe for repairs. We understand the fire broke out late on a Friday night when a number of sailors were asleep and others had been drinking. It's thought to have been caused by a faulty air conditioning unit in one of the mess areas, in one of the sleeping quarters on the 65,000 tonne vessel. The first responders, the first crew who responded to the fire used at least 10 foam fire extinguishers and an emergency fire hose, but they were unable to bring the blaze under control and they sealed off the compartment to try and stop it spreading. At which point, commanders ordered an emergency evacuation of the lower decks, the clear lower decks order, and all the crew of the vessel were reported, uh, were ordered to report in the hangar, the space underneath the deck where the aircraft carrier normally stores the aircraft for a headcount and also so that those who were fit and able could be given tasks to help fight the fire and bring the situation under control. Now, we understand a number of the sailors were drunk or had been drinking. Uh, that's, there's no suggestion that the drunkenness was either a contributing factor to the cause of the fire, nor did it hinder the response to the fire. It's simply a fact that this happened on a Friday night, and as Navy sources have pointed out to me, this vessel is the sailor's home, and if they're off duty, they are entitled to drink. Nonetheless, it did perhaps complicate decisions for the commanders who were working out who to send where. There was a duty watch uh, in command of the vessel at the time and they took charge of the response. Now we understand that at least uh, th the, the fire did spread vertically, smoke and water spreading between the decks. This is why so many uh, living areas, living quarters have been destroyed. A number of those sailors who reported to the hangar were reporting in their underwear and flip-flops, all of their belongings have been destroyed. And the following day, uh, many were taken by bus to a nearby supermarket to try and replenish uh, some essentials. Now, initially, when this uh, first, the news of this fire first broke, the Navy referred to it as a minor fire, an isolated fire that was quickly brought under control. And the reason uh, they used that word, a minor fire, which might not necessarily fit a civilian understanding, is because it did not affect the vessel's ability to sail. It wasn't in an engine room, uh, it wasn't in a command center, it was in living quarters, and although it's destroyed a hundred living spaces, uh, there is there are actually a thousand beds on this boat and the, there is space to accommodate the sailors uh, elsewhere. But it is nonetheless a blow for the Royal Navy. This is the flagship vessel, it costs 3.2 billion pounds. It's one of the largest and most expensive ships ever built for the Navy, along with its sister aircraft carrier, HMS Prince of Wales. But of course, this comes just weeks after HMS Queen Elizabeth had to give up its place on Exercise Steadfast Defender, the largest NATO drill since the end of the Cold War. The day that Queen Elizabeth was due to sail, the crew detected a fault in one of her propeller shafts. Uh, and so instead of going to the exercise, she's instead sailed to Scotland for repairs and HMS Prince of Wales has had to take her place. But this isn't the first time these vessels have had problems. Both of them have suffered from leaks, floods and fires. In one sense, of course, all warships, all vessels would expect to encounter some of these problems. But for HMS Queen Elizabeth, it was just weeks after she entered Navy service in 2017 that a faulty seal on the propeller shaft was letting in 200 litres of seawater an hour. A couple of years later, she had to cut short her sea trials because of another leak. In 2021, just days, just weeks before she was due to set sail on her maiden carrier strike group voyage to Japan, effectively around the world and back, uh, she suffered from floods caused by burst high-pressure hoses, effectively the, the hoses that would be used to put out fires, the high, their high-pressure saltwater system, burst, flooding uh, large parts of the ship. A similar thing had happened on board HMS Queen Elizabeth, and it, sorry, on board HMS Prince of Wales, the sister ship. And when that happened, the saltwater damaged miles and miles of the ship's electrics, delaying uh, its program many, many months and costing many millions of pounds. 
when HMS Queen Elizabeth was sailing back from that carrier strike group voyage in November 2021, as she came through uh, the Mediterranean, one of the F-35B Lightning jets uh, that is based on board crashed into the Mediterranean and didn't really manage to take off because somebody had forgotten to remove an engine blank, a rain cover from the aircraft's engine. So as it tried to take off, it couldn't get the oxygen it needed into the engine to burn the fuel. It failed to get to get up the speed it needed to take off and it effectively plopped off the front of the ski ramp runway. The pilot uh, managing to eject, landing in the water and was recovered safely. The most recent problem for HMS Queen Elizabeth before this fire was the propeller shaft incident when it was due to take part in the NATO drill. Sister ship HMS Prince of Wales has had similar propeller issues just as she was about to make an important diplomatic voyage to America. Uh, she found herself stranded in the Solent and that voyage had to be aborted while she went back for repairs. HMS Queen Elizabeth took over and while HMS Prince of Wales was in Rosyth shipyard in Scotland undergoing those repairs, we know that she was cannibalized for spare parts in order to keep Queen Elizabeth seaworthy. So, you know, the, the journey of these aircraft carriers has been fraught uh, with difficulties. Uh, they are expensive and complicated pieces of equipment. The fire that the Navy described as a minor fire, nonetheless, clearly very significant for the crew on board, for those hundred sailors who may have lost their beds and all their belongings. The Navy insists that this will not affect the ship's program. She is still uh, seaworthy or at least sufficiently seaworthy to sail from Glen Mallon uh, to Rosyth, where those scheduled repairs to the propeller coupling to the faulty coupling on the propeller are due to go ahead.